Welcome to the Healed and Rich podcast. My name is Dimitri. And I'm your girl Shakora. And today we're going to be talking about one of the keys that may be keeping you from finding your kingdom spell. Absolutely. Uh, matter of fact, we are going to be showing you by the end of this video what it is that's keeping you from finding your kingdom spouse. Mm -hmm. This understanding and revelation was found through many, many years of testing research and allowing the Holy Spirit to show me the way. Right. Inside of this, this process, once I found out these three big keys mm -hmm. that were blocking me from finding my, my wife, mm -hmm. um, I was able to share this with many, many, many other people that were able to find their husband or wives supernaturally uh, within a short amount of time. And it's not about having time of waiting on the right person. No, you don't have to wait. The Bible says that God saw that it was not good for man to be alone. And he immediately began to find a solution before Adam even requested for a wife. You don't have to wait because it's already a problem for man to be alone. And in today's time, we are in desperate need for kingdom marriages. Yes, yes. The world is showing us what they want marriage to look like. And it's trickling down into even in the churches to where people aren't even getting married anymore just because they're so confused about the topic, the okay. issue at hand. And so tonight we're going to be unveiling, unraveling, uncovering some mysteries that's keeping you and finding your kingdom spouse. I think one of the um, really good keys would be ignorance. Absolutely. That is the biggest yeah, key. The biggest key yeah. Ignorance is the biggest key. So what's keeping you from finding your spouse is ignorance. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get upset and take it as a word that could be offensive. Mm -hmm. No, ignorance simply means not knowing. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing is ignorance, and inside of, inside of ignorance, there's a couple of different things that's mm -hmm. hanging under the umbrella. Mm -hmm. Speaking of one of the three topics that mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about tonight, could be causing you to be in a situation to where God is not even hearing your prayers. Right. You've been praying for a husband or a wife. Right. You've been praying for a job. Right. What would keep God from hearing your prayers? Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. The Bible teaches us mm -hmm. in Matthew 6, 14 and 15, yeah. Yeah. it says that if you forgive those that have offended you, yeah. God will also forgive you of your debts. Yeah. Yeah. And it also goes on to say in the 15th verse, the sixth chapter of Matthew, it says that, but if you do not forgive others of their debts, their offenses, their wrongdoings against you, and also God will not forgive you mm -hmm. of your debt, of your sins. That's huge. That's really, really, really significant. That if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, mm -hmm. that God will not forgive you. So that means that you could be standing at the pearly gates, thinking that you got your right robe waiting on you, your halo waiting on you, your wings waiting on you, whatever it is that you can imagine. And God says, no, 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 no. Right here in the back of your heart, you didn't forgive your you third ex. You Matter of fact, you didn't forgive that person that did something to you last week. Whatever it is, there's something that's causing you to not enter into God's presence. Mm -hmm. Some of you can't even worship, right? You don't even understand why you can't even enter into his presence. It's because you have unforgiveness in your heart. Many people want to understand why they're dealing with sicknesses and illnesses. It's because you have unforgiveness in your heart. Whenever you're, it's like this, it's like me coming to you and say, hey, I, I know I'm in debt. I know I owe you $100,000. I'm working on it. And then the scripture, this yeah. is a story in Matthew 18. Right. The scripture says yeah. that the master came and said, your debt, you, you forgive my debt, right? Mm -hmm. I go back the same day. Right. I see somebody that owe me ten dollars. I go up and say, "Hey, where my ten dollars at?" Oh, I can't pay you right now. I'm, I'm trying to sh scrap it up. Mm -hmm. And I go and punish them for it. Mm -hmm. This is what the scripture says that this man did. And the Bible teaches us that he was thrown into a pit, right. which symbolizes hell. Mm -hmm. He was separated from God because he had got forgave, yeah. forgiven of yeah. his yeah. debt. Yeah. 
but on the other end he did not forgive those are you in the same situation Mm -hmm. are you in the same same place and it could be something very very small it could be something big three things and keys that will allow you to understand if you have forgiven someone right. or if you are in a place that where you still are indebted. Yeah. You want to speak on those? I think the three keys are one, if um, you're triggered by this person. Mm, if you see this good. person and they still trigger you and you don't want to be in their presence, I feel like that is a clear sign of unforgiveness. Uh, another sign could be when someone brings them up in a conversation and you're like, I don't really want to talk about them, mm-hmm. or you just begin to feel some type of way in your heart, in yeah. your spirit, in your mind. That's another key, that sign that you that's have good. unforgiveness. And just like if you block the person or you no mm-hmm. longer want to have contact with them, that's a sign of unforgiveness because really we see in the Bible with Peter, when Peter did end up denying Jesus three times, like Jesus said he was going to. Peter left. Peter completely went back to doing what he was doing when Jesus found him. Peter didn't, you know, he didn't say, I forgive myself. I know that Jesus loved me. I'm going to continue to have faith in what he told me before he died. No, Peter went back to the same place that Jesus uh, found him. And when Jesus came back, all Jesus said was, Peter, do you love me? Mm. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Basically saying, if you love me, just go and do what I told you to do. He didn't bring up anything that he did. He didn't say, I told you this was going to happen. He didn't say, my word was true. He didn't try to prove a point. He just said, go feed my sheep. And that shows that Jesus had the ultimate level level of forgiveness. That's a clear sign for us in the Bible that we can model after that if we've forgiven somebody, we're able to just move past it That's and good. pick back up as nothing happened. So good. Good answer. I couldn't have <laughs> said any better than that. That's like the perfect answer for explaining what forgiveness mm-hmm. is. And to, to piggyback on what you're saying is that this is the how to. She kind of just gave you guys the blueprint of what it is to feel unforgiveness or what it is to check if you want a temperature check of if you Mm -hmm. really are through forgiving someone Mm -hmm. if you really are through forgiving them or the people whoever it is a group of people that may may need to forgive Mm -hmm. one is like you have to temperature check it because to be proven in anything you have to be tested in it and the tests come when their name is mentioned, like mm-hmm. she said, right? Mm-hmm. In conversation, that's casual conversation with your home pe- homeboys and your homegirls, and that name is mentioned that may have offended you, that mm-hmm. may have hurt you, that may have backstabbed you, may have betrayed you, mm-hmm. may have taken advantage of you of any type of way, right? right? These are the people that may trigger something, that trauma, that experience, that lie that was told, that hurt that was, that, that was there, mm-hmm. right? Those things, those scars that have been tucked away and hidden mm-hmm. may begin to bleed and, and, and may begin mm-hmm. to hurt again. It may begin to feel the scab in the womb again. It may be trigger that memory of what mm-hmm. exactly had happened, right? Those are signs that you really haven't forgiven this person. Mm-hmm. It could be a time to where you may be scrolling on social media. It could be Facebook, yeah. or Instagram, or YouTube, and you may yeah. see a picture, and all of a sudden you could be having a good day. All of a sudden you feel something inside of your stomach. You feel queasy. Right. All of a sudden you feel disgusted. All of a sudden you feel irritated. All of a sudden you feel sad, and all of a sudden you feel angry. Whatever it is towards that person, that is a sign that you have not given this person also it could be that where you go to a family function or you might supposed to be meeting up with your people and all of a sudden you know that they're going to be there and then you begin to change your oh well i'm not going to be able to make it (laughs) this time i don't think i'm going to be able to come out there uh and it's not because you don't want to go and spend time with your family but because you can't stand to be in the midst in the presence of this other person Mm -hmm. these are telltale signs that you have not forgiven them right now how you get to a place to where you can look at this person because there's freedom Mm -hmm. so much freedom it's so much freedom when you can be in the place of your offender and not feel any hate towards them not feel like knocking them out right not feel like calling the police on them not feel like doing something to get revenge for what they may have done Mm -hmm. there's so much peace inside of that Mm -hmm. and this is what jesus did with peter he gave him an opportunity to be restored. Wow. That's good. He didn't get to restart, but he was able to be restored. Wow. Some of us don't know how to restore other people. Man, that's And that's so the good. biggest thing that Christ did to us. He restored us and, and cleaned our balance. He took away our debt. And some of us have 
hold on to so many people's debts. We got so much money that we don't the collect it from people. And God is saying, but what have I done for you? What have I done for you? This is the place to where God is trying to get his people to open our eyes and see that whatever you, however you judge others, it shall be judged unto you in that same measure. In that same measure. And so now, let me ask you, before you even pray for a husband, pray for a wife, the first thing you need to be praying for, God, show me where I have unforgiveness in my heart. Show me where I have unforgiveness in my, in my heart. Because if unforgiveness can separate you from God, then you are wondering why mm -hmm. you have been separated from your spouse for so long. Right. You praying for a husband from God, mm -hmm. but God is like, you can't forgive them. Right. Why would I give you a treasure and you get a husband and you get mad at him and you can't show forgiveness to him? And a marriage is supposed to be the perfect reflection daily of what Christ and the church represent. Right. Exactly. Daily. Man, that's so good. I'm sorry. One I... of the things <laughs> yeah. that could be keeping you from finding your spouse, your significant other, your husband, your wife, is the debt unforgiveness mm -hmm. yep. caused you to have. Right. And when you're trying to become rich in love, which is our slogan, you can afford the best to love that has to offer. You have no time to be in debt. No, right. No time to be in debt. Mm -hmm. That's the first step. I'm giving you guys sauce. I'm giving you guys secrets. I hear it right now. Yeah. What you need to do is write a list when you, tonight of every person mm -hmm. that may have offended you, may have hurt you, they may have lied on you, to where you may have feel some type of way about whatever this could be the smallest thing it could be a coach it could be a family member it could be a best friend it could be things that you haven't talked about haven't communicated haven't told anybody about write that down yeah. write it all down and while you're writing it down here are steps to go through forgiveness each name that comes about face and image and each story that's told in the, the situation what happened i want you to begin to pray for that person wow. but pray that they have a blessed fulfilled, happy life. When you can get to a place in all honesty and all sincere of heart and hope and pray with all your might that they have a blessed life, mm -hmm. that they live healthy, mm -hmm. that they're financially successful, that everything goes right, that the favor of God opens right. up their heart, opens up their mind, and that God is with them, then you've gotten to a place where you really understand at the deepest level of Christ forgiving you and now you're going to freely give that to somebody else. Right. This is why you got to forgive. Mm -hmm. This is the why. The why you have to forgive, it's not so much of also that God is not going to answer our prayers. That's true. That God is not going to forgive us of our debts. That's true. That's Bible. But God does not lie. But here's the biggest key. Mm -hmm. It's because majority of unforgiveness is caused by one person. It's mm -hmm. crazy, right? You can have 99 different people that you are holding a grudge against us, upset about, but it all comes down to one person. And that one person is also in the same person that she mentioned, Peter, mm -hmm. right? Peter was used by this one person. This is Apostle Peter. Peter that would one day walk in the shadow, would heal people. And one day, Apostle Peter, that would go and preach to a church of the, as of the Gentiles and save a whole body of people. This Peter, Apostle Peter, the great Peter. The only one who identified Jesus correctly. Come on, that Peter. Yeah. Right. He was also used by Satan. If Peter can be used by Satan, and this is also in the Bible, you'll see this in the text where Jesus is about to go to the cross and Peter is there talking and saying, God, I don't, I don't want you to go to the cross. I don't think you have to do all these different things. Jesus turns around and looks at him and he says, Satan. Get thee behind me. He didn't turn around and say, Peter, shut up. He didn't turn around and say, Peter. He didn't argue back with Peter. Wow. A lot of times what's blocking you is that you're too busy fighting with flesh and blood. We're so busy fighting with flesh and blood that we're missing the main person that's causing the discord. It's causing the separation. It's causing the joy to be stolen. It's causing the peace to be stolen. Everything that's been stolen from me, the enemy has taken it little by little, here and there, here and there. And you're blaming Tom, you're blaming David, you're blaming Harry, you're blaming your mama, you're blaming your dad, you're blaming your cousin, you're blaming your best friend, but you ain't blaming Satan not one time. 
and it was him. If, and I had to understand this. You'll be able to humbly understand and position yourself to see this revelation when you understand that if Satan can use Peter, he can definitely use me. That's the problem with many of our saints. We think we're too holy. We think that we're too righteous. We think that we're too perfect that Satan cannot use us to offend somebody, to hurt somebody, to curse somebody. You can be a Christian and curse somebody. You can be a Christian and still not be in the right standing with God. You could be going to church for many, many years. You could be a pastor and still not be in the right standing with God. We all have to be humble enough to say, if God, Satan can come and use Peter, then he definitely can use, use me. And Jesus recognized this. And this is why he was able to rebuke Satan, still keep the relationship with Peter, and they not separate. Mm -hmm. Many of us don't know how to rebuke Satan Still keep the relationship with the person because we're so busy worrying about flesh and blood. We think it's them. Yeah. And that's such a good point because if Jesus would have failed that test, now it was completely possible for Jesus to fail that test. Absolutely. Completely possible. But if Jesus would have failed that test, just imagine how many lives wouldn't have been saved because Peter would have been lost. Mm -hmm. Imagine that broken relationship between Jesus and Peter, because we said Jesus, uh, Peter was a very powerful apostle. He was Absolutely. very blessed and very anointed and the Holy Spirit, God used him in a mighty, mighty way. But just imagine if Jesus was focused on emotions and flesh and blood, like we are majority of the time. Imagine how many souls would have been lost. Because of exactly. Think about it. Like in those days. He knew that Judas was going to betray him and give him away. Yeah. If I knew in the back of my mind that my partner, the person that's supposed to ride with me for the past three years, was about to go and betray me to the hands of the enemy and put my life on line, and I knew this. We knew it. Oh, we the box. We finished yeah. it. Oh, no, he's not leaving it. Type of thing. Wow. Right? That's and that's how we do it. But he knew that, oh. I'm going to let you go and do your thing because this is a part. That's what he said. It. He said, do what you have to do. Satan. Yeah. Go and do it swiftly. Wow. Satan was using Peter. He is stuck into Peter, right? And you got to, and that's a whole topic in itself. We'll teach about that, <laughs> of how not to, how to close doors so Satan can't get in. Because there has to be a door for him to get in. It has to be a door. And a lot of times it's because of pride. But we'll get there. Unforgiveness. Yeah. And I want you to show, I want to show you guys what unforgiveness really does, right? Unforgiveness can kill you quickly or it can be a slow death. How it kills you quickly is when you go and look at the text, what happens to Judas as the story goes on? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that he got up, he mm -hmm. went into the temple, he, he threw, the, the, threw the money mm -hmm. and they didn't want it. he gave away Jesus with his location. Mm -hmm. After he had done this thing, mm -hmm. the Bible says that he could not forgive himself because he had given away an innocent man. Good. And he goes yes. and he hangs himself. Right. There's a lot of people spiritually been hanging themselves because you can't forgive somebody. You have been hanging yourself because you cannot forgive yourself. And that that, wow. that spiritual death is, is suffocating your whole entire blood to where there's diseases begin to pop up. Oh, where does this come from? The spot become to pop up. These different things begin to happen. Headaches begin to happen. Migraines begin to happen. Anxiety comes out of nowhere. You don't know where anxiety comes from. You ain't never had anxiety in your entire life. Mm -hmm. All of these different things begin to happen and it's a slow death or it's a quick one. Right. When you can't forgive yourself, you can get to a place to where it's suicidal. It's suicidal. Now, when we're talking about it in the concept of relationships, it's very, very important to understand why forgiveness could be keeping you, is keeping you mm -hmm. from your significant other. Mm -hmm. It's because when you become free, you then have, when you become free in forgiveness, what you're doing is showing God one that I thank you for the gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. I thank you for the works upon the cross. You're in a place of gratitude and all on, on a daily basis, constantly thanking God for that thing that he did, mm -hmm. that price that he paid, because that was a debt that you owed. Right. But because of the price that he paid, you are free and debt clear. When you are grateful for that, completely grateful for that, it's hard for you to come and give somebody else less than what you received, unless your heart wow. is not with God.
Some of us just may not have a heart that's built on integrity and character. And that is probably the factor that's keeping you from your husband and wife. It's because you've been taken from other people, but the thing that you have been taken, you have not been given back. You're clogged up when you're supposed to be something that's transitioning and funneling and passing through. You're clogged up. You don't understand why. And now you can't evolve and become the person that you're supposed to become because you're stubborn. You don't want to let go. You want to hold on because it feels good temporarily to hate somebody, to have a grudge somebody on somebody. To all those, those feelings, we have become so addicted to the negative feelings that we don't even trust. When we, so good, right. we don't trust it. Oh, oh man, as soon as you're good. feeling good, it's like, right. oh, something bad is about to happen. Right, something must be wrong. Right. right. We right. can't something be comfortable be right. in happiness and peace. Wow. We can't be. But we'll begin to <laughs> trickle in on the other two factors that's keeping you from finding your significant mm-hmm. other. But the biggest one is ignorance. If you're out there, you're searching for love. You're searching to be married one day. You're searching for a husband or wife. You have to get in position to seek out wise counsel. It doesn't make sense to continue to fail, 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 fail without seeking out wise counsel, especially in the arena of marriage. Mm-hmm. It's a lifetime ordeal. Get as much wisdom, knowledge, information about what you're about to do, jump into, or we just do it. Before you say, I do. But you got to understand what you're saying, I do too. You got to understand what I do means. You got to understand the roles. You got to understand the factors that the enemy can use to hurt you, to keep you separated, to keep you disappointed, because there's a, a, a lifelong battle between Satan and the marriage. If you are and do find, you will find that kingdom spouse, I promise you, Satan will come to destroy it. But when you built sturdy, you built tough, you built with truth, Mm -hmm. there's nothing Satan can do to penetrate that when you're built on truth. Because you don't waver. Truth keeps you straight. Truth is singular as well. Truth is very singular. The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So when you're unsure of a matter, mm-hmm. you're double thinking of is this the process, is this the way, is this, have I done this? Have I done? If you're double minded, that means you're unstable in all of your ways. And thanks guys for tuning in. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and stay tuned for another video. Absolutely. Okay. Be blessed. Thank you.